Hello everyone, this is Rick and welcome to Astro Club. Today we're going to tackle skepticism and astral projection. Before we get to that, I just want to announce some new Astro Club supporters on Patreon. There is Eind here, that's A I N D H I R, who is an astral master, John McManus, who is an astral master. Nick, who is an Astral Scout, and John B. Brewer, who is an Astral Scout. And I thank you all um, for this support. I very much appreciate it. It helps this channel grow and spread Astral Projection. And if anyone else would like to participate, there will be a link to Patreon in the description. And you get your videos early and there's some Patreon uh, patron content. And uh, we can talk back and forth easily because there's a Patreon email. So that link will be in the description. Okay, skepticism and skeptics and astral projection. Now, first of all, what is a skeptic? And there's many definitions, but one I found just said, a person inclined to question or doubt accepted opinions. Uh there's nothing wrong with being skeptical, especially uh, on s in certain circumstances. Let's say that suddenly one day I announce on this channel that I've discovered that I'm actually the Easter Bunny and that I have been told by some magical fairy that every Easter I must now dress up like a bunny and hop about to everyone's home delivering colored eggs. Oh, and also those chocolate creamy ones. Those are pretty good. Those too. Now, if I were to announce something like that, I would not be surprised and I should not be surprised if you would react in a skeptical way because the chances that Rick suddenly discovered via a fairy that he was actually the Easter Bunny would be remarkably small. Most particularly because as far as I know, the Easter Bunny does not exist, or at least he's been avoiding my home ever since the time I was around seven or eight. Um, but, so, skepticism. Now, when it comes to astral projection, if you're interested in astral projection, you're going to encounter it. And there's two kinds of skepticism, really. There's self-skepticism, when you doubt what you're doing yourself. Even if you've astral projected, you have your own doubts. And then there's also the skepticism of others. And I want to talk about that subject and perhaps ways to, to deal with it. Now, I have a lot of experience in this particular area, going way back to when I was just a kid. Uh, I remember going back around eh, four or five years old. I know I was projecting before that, but my memories really start somewhere around there. And um, I would freely talk about it with my parents. Now, when I was that young, they just dismissed it as dreams or as a very uh, imaginative child. Uh, so, uh, you know, they listened to me and, oh, yeah, that's great. But when I went to school in kindergarten, when I was five years old, I was also talking about my projections. No, they weren't fancy, as my first thousand or so projections weren't fancy. For the most part, as a kid, I'd leave my body, fly around my house and in the immediate area, uh, run around looking for somebody to play with, uh, that type of stuff. It wasn't fancy, but for a kid, it was interesting. Uh, and I would talk about this, but I stopped soon after because I encountered skepticism and I encountered skeptics. And these skeptics, <laughs> when you're dealing with kids, can be very cruel. And I'd be called names like weirdo and freak. So I learned very early not to talk about it anymore with my peers in school. Now, I still did talk about it at home because I thought that was a safe place. And I've got great parents and they're still alive. And I'm extremely happy about that. Um, but you have to understand that this was the 1960s 
in a smaller town uh, in Pennsylvania. So there just wasn't any knowledge about astral projection or even the possibility of such a thing. So I recall one time projecting when I was probably around seven years old or so. And sometimes every now and again, I'd spy on my parents and see what they were up to. Uh, but this particular occasion, they were around the kitchen table and they were whispering. And I could sense their thoughts. And I knew they were very concerned about me. Um, and they were talking about sending me to a psychiatrist uh, because of all these stories that I was telling them. Uh, now, I didn't know what a psychiatrist was at the age of seven or so. But I did get the sense that it was a doctor. And I didn't like going to doctors because they gave you shots. So I stopped talking about it with my parents. Now, a year or two later, I think I saw some movie where some guy was sent to a psychiatrist. And then they then put him in a straitjacket and threw him in a padded room. And I definitely knew I didn't want that to happen to me. So I was very secretive then for a long time. And I'd have my own little journals and I'd hide them uh, you know, underneath a lot of toys and things. Uh, so that nobody could find them, uh, because I thought, I thought there was something wrong with me because I had that self doubt at that point in time. I mean, when you have your friends calling you a weirdo and a freak and you have your parents thinking you needed to go to a doctor because there was something wrong with you, you doubt yourself. And uh, I continued to doubt myself and consider that I had some sort of a secret problem until I was 11 when I ran across that book that you can communicate with the unseen dead. And there was this one little paragraph that talked about astral projection and how people who could do it could leave their bodies and go places. At that point, at least, I learned that it wasn't just me, that others did it too. And now I had a name for it. So... I was able to solve my own skepticism at that point in time um, because of that little entry. And then a little bit later, the, the first Robert Monroe book came out, Journeys Out of the Body. And when I read that, then I definitely knew I wasn't alone because here is some respected businessman, you know, who p pulled some of these other scientists and other leaders uh, around him to form the Monroe Institute. And here he is talking about the same kind of experiences that I had. So I wasn't alone and I wasn't crazy. And there was others out there doing that as well. So at that point in time, uh, I would say that my, my self-skepticism went away completely. Uh, however, and of course, then I then did a lot of research. I mean, uh, a lot of kids, 10, 11, 12 years old, they're out playing ball after school. Me, I was in libraries um, doing research, trying to find anything I could on that subject. And I was able to find that every culture from Native Americans to South Americans to ancient Egyptians, Asians, every culture you could think of had its version of astral projection. going, And in written records, going all the way back to ancient Egypt. So, it wasn't just myself, Robert Monroe, and some other folks. It had been going on for thousands of years, and it was in written records of every human civilization that existed. So, my self-skepticism was completely resolved. But you still have to deal with the skepticism of others. Um... And when you're dealing with others, you're dealing with those close to you, and then you're dealing with those who are outsiders, um, but are also skeptics. So how do you want to handle them? And there's a number of ways you can. Um, one of the skeptical branches is science. Now, I have had questions, uh, people from time to time, who have said, Rick, why don't you share some of your discoveries with um, science? Like, for instance, uh, last week, I believe I mentioned the time I went back in time and uh, when I was a kid and I discovered that dinosaurs had feathers. 
uh, okay, let's say that I, I, ha I wasn't self-skeptical at that age. Can you imagine what would happen if some seven or eight-year-old sent a letter to some paleontologist somewhere saying that, oh, hi, listen, my name's Rick, uh, I'm in third grade or something, and uh, I've discovered that dinosaurs actually had feathers and moved quickly, so uh, why don't you uh, write a paper about that and correct all your fellow, fellow scientists? Well, <laughs> let's face it, that scientist, that paleontologist would have laughed his butt off and then thrown that letter away. But even if it would have been possible to convince him, you have to be peer reviewed. Can you imagine if that poor scientist went to his colleagues and said, hey, I got this information from some eight-year-old who can leave his body and go back in time. <laughs> Could you blame them for being skeptical? You couldn't. Because in our scientific method, things like astral projection just aren't accepted. They're not part of that accepted physical scientific method. So it is a little frustrating for me when I discover these things, knowing that I can share them with you at Astral Club, but I really can't share them anywhere else. Um, perhaps one day science will be open enough to accept this type of information. But for right now, what can we do with scientific skeptics? Unfortunately, not a lot. Uh, and most particularly uh, because they, being scientists, they like to say they have open minds, but nowadays they really don't. They believe that they don't know everything, but they believe they know what they know. <laughs> and by that, I mean they have an accepted version of reality. And most of them are atheists. And I don't have a problem with that, but many atheists believe as a part of that belief system that when we die, our physical body dies, that's it. So if that's your belief system and you believe that as a core belief that is not up for negotiation, then how are you going to believe something like, like astral projection? It's a fool's errand at that point. I probably would have a better time convincing them that I'm secretly the Easter Bunny than I am trying to convince them of astral projection or what I've been able to discover during that process. So what can we do for now with science? For the most part, we have to let them, we just have to leave them alone um, and let them uh, work in the physical environment, which is an environment they're comfortable with and that's where they can make their gains and they'll have to learn all everything else at a slower pace because that's just the course that they have chosen. Now, I mentioned uh, skeptics and uh, people who, um, who are in the general part of our society, and, and atheists, for instance, are one of those. Not that I have a problem with them, other than the fact that if they're really true atheists, then they believe, at least my understanding is, that death is death and there's no existence afterwards. Um, I have no problem with someone saying, I don't believe in the God of the Bible, but I believe in existence afterwards. I don't have a problem with that. But unfortunately, from what I found, that belief tends to go together. Uh, and then, of course, there's, there's the, the skeptics who are the show-me types. And when I say the show-me types, once again, they're people who will never believe until they've done it themselves. Which, for me, that's what they need to do. There's nothing you're going to say, in my experience, that's going to convince this type of skeptic. Nothing. Because in their mind, they believe what they've experienced. Um, I mean, I believe that if, if for some reason you dealt with somebody who has, who has never had a dream, <laughs> if that was possible, you wouldn't be able to convince them that dreams were real. So how are you going to convince them? that astral projection is a reality. So if you encounter someone like this, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can just ignore them or tell them if they're that interested, they can read Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. And then hopefully they will learn to do it themselves. My brother was one of these show me types. 
and he read the book Journeys Out of the Body, and he had a spontaneous astral projection. After that, he was a lot less skeptical because he had done it himself. And now, trying to be the ultimate skeptic was much more difficult because he'd done it for himself. And uh, that's what was necessary to, uh, to convince him. Then there's the ultra-religious people. And when I say ultra-religious, I'm generally talking about ultra-Christians. But I imagine um, certain types of, of uh, Muslims uh, might fall into that same type of category. Um, and perhaps other religions as well. And these people have similar blinders on. They believe that astral projection is either A, not possible, or worse, B, that it is possible, and it's only possible because the devil's making you do it, or making you believe you're doing it, or what have you. In which case they're saying, yes, I believe you're, you're leaving your body, and that's a bad thing, <laughs> and it's evil, and demons are going to get you. So you really shouldn't be doing that. So in a weird way, they might believe you, but at the same time, they think it's a bad idea. So that's a weird type of skepticism there, um, because it's kind of a it's a weird hybrid enforced upon them by uh, rigid religious beliefs. Uh, now we get into the skeptical friends and relatives. Now, some of the other folks you can pretty much, if you decide to ignore them, you can ignore them. But when you're dealing with your friends and relatives, it's a little different. Now you can always just do what I did when I was a kid which is just keep silent. However, today is a lot different than when I was growing up in the 60s and 70s. There's a lot more information out there. There's songs that mention astral projection. Um, for instance, that Talking Heads song, uh, And She Was. I, I mentioned that a number of videos back. There's books about it now, a lot more than just Journeys Out of the Body. There's There's been television programs about it. So there's a lot more information out there now. So if you've got a friend or a relative with a genuine open mind, there's places they can go. You can refer them to this channel, for instance, uh, if they are generally interested and if they have an open mind. I mean, right now, I think I, I did some math. I figured out that there's uh, so many chat, there's so many videos now on this channel that you could literally, if you were masochistic, listen to me for 48 hours straight before you would run out of videos. So there's quite a bit of, of information there uh, that you could show someone who is genuinely interested in learning. And I, I think that is probably the key point here when you're dealing with skeptics. You have to find out how legitimately open their mind is. If they have a closed mind, you're not going to open it just by relating your experiences or, or showing them a, a book or anything else. Um, I... It's pretty much impossible to share astral projection with someone whose mind is completely closed. If you've got somebody though whose mind is open, if they have a historical bent, you can point them to uh, every human culture on earth, going back to the ancient Egyptians when they talked about the Ka leaving the body uh, and how certain priests of Osiris had to demonstrate they could astral project and then return to their body and tell a story about what they experienced in order to become full priests, uh, full priests of Osiris. Right, the Native American cultures when they were talking about spirit walkers. So if you if they're of a historical bent, there's plenty of historical knowledge out there. But you know, there's also these books and then these videos and and TV programs and what have you. So it is possible to help educate someone who is uh, who does have an open mind. So if I encounter skeptics on Astro Club, as long as uh, no foul language is used and they don't attack 
uh, myself or fellow Astro Club members. I'm always open to uh, any type of comment that, that someone wishes to leave. Or if they say, uh, Rick, I disagree with this particular uh, way or method of astral projection. I believe it is not as effective as you said it was. And I believe this is a much better method. Um, now, if there's someone who says, I don't believe in astral projection, well, they won't be on this channel for very long because why would you <laughs> be listening to a video every week about something that you had absolutely no, no belief that it existed. That would be ludicrous. Um, so all I ask is everyone you be civil and explain your belief system and or if you have a, a better idea as to how something should be done. Uh, I'm always open to that uh, as well. Okay, well, listen, um, that was skepticism and skeptics and astral projection. As I said, it's something that we're all going to face somewhere along the line. So you'll have to decide for yourself how you want to handle it. And hopefully this video will help you to some degree. Because uh, certainly, as I said, I have had experience in this particular area. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't already. I always enjoy your questions and comments, and I read them all and answer as many as I can. And if you want to support this channel on Patreon, there'll be a link in the description. And as always, I'm Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.